but let's go for it. So, ah, see, here it is, 730. This is the maximum that I've got so far. Hey guys, and welcome back to another video, and I hope you are okay on that side of the screen. And hopefully I'm recording the screen right now, because I just finished recording, and uh, it wasn't recording the screen. And by curiosity, I got the best results in terms of uh, transfer speeds but let's try and achieve those results once again now what we are going to do today is we are going to take an approach a quick overview regarding this Nash which I will leave a link down below <music> And we are back. So besides the Nash, as I was saying, this is not a new Nash. It is here on loan. So I will do a few more tests and then I will send it back. We will be using the new Keynap switch with two 10 gigabit ports and eight 2.5 gigabit ports, which I'm loving it. And of course, also a grid tool right over here, which is the Sabrent adapter Thunderbolt 3 2. 10 gigabit connection and on the last video we used my macbook pro but today we are going to use the mac mini with bootcamp windows 10 which is an operating system that a lot of you guys use so not using mac os all the time and basically these are the tools that we are going to use on this uh, video but let's just take a quick overview on the nash unit first of all i'm using the uh, my new uh, 14 terabytes from um, toshiba n300 i'm using them on a lot of tests before i deploy them on the machine that will be using them for my own files in terms of the nash itself it takes six um, discs of 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch but uh, I'm only using four. Now, one of the things that I really love is that I don't need screws. Any Nash that doesn't require screws to uh, put the discs in, and I'm not lazy, but this is a great system. It's not the first time that we've seen it on a Nash, but it's always, always nice. Also, one of the things that I really enjoy is that this is totally upgradable. Now, once we open it up, we will have uh, two PCIe slots, one of which is already populated with a 10 gigabit card, which we can then connect. And of course, we also have uh, on one of the sides uh, the capability of putting uh, NVMe SSDs inside so that it can improve the speeds by using cache and also we can upgrade the RAM. So if you want a machine such as this one to have multiple virtual machines, then this is just awesome because it's completely upgradable. If we look at the back, then we will have two HDMI outputs. And if you ask, okay, Robert, why HDMI? We can use this as a computer. We can use it as a multimedia center, but especially as a computer where we have several uh, virtual machines, several uh, virtual operating systems, and we can use it connected to a display, for example, to this place for example so there are a lot of uses on these machines if you search for NAS on my channel you'll find a lot of reviews and features that we have covered so uh, I will challenge you to do that we also have three USB 3.0 ports and four one gigabit connectivity uh, four connections sorry uh, with one gigabit um, connection and with link aggregation and I will try before I send it back to test out the link aggregation with one 10 gigabit connection because link aggregation usually is to use over four different machines so one machine with one gigabit another machine with one gigabit and so on and so forth connected directly and that's link aggregation but i will test out with 10 gigabit to four one gigabit not really sure if it works but if we don't test out, we will never know. Besides that, we also have two audio inputs, one audio output, two fans to cool the discs, and one smaller fan, which I guess that's 40 millimeter, maybe 80 millimeters, no, 40. Uh, and that is it, that's about it. Regarding the dashboard, we have seen this dashboard a few times, so I'll not lose uh, your time right over here or not waste your time to be more precise in terms of the firmware so that uh, we can check that at the time of the recording of the video 4.5.2.1594 and this is uh, using 8 gigabytes of RAM with the AMD CPU and basically we have all the features that KeyNap delivers and of course we have the App Center and the Control Panel which is 
with a lot of features. One of the things that I always suggest when people ask me, hey Robert, which NAS should I choose? Um, I always say, if you want something to just store files and you are sure that you don't want anything else from that, you can just go for anything. Something very simple like WD, My Book Live and things like that. But if you want to store files and besides that you want to play with it and you want to use it as a Plex server, but uh, later on you will want to use as something else, different operating systems, virtual machines and so on and so forth, then go for something that it doesn't need to be this one because this is an expensive unit, but it can be one with two bays uh, from Kimnap. They will have, they have a lot of them, and you can search, and you will have this operating system that will allow you to do a lot of stuff. So if you in six months you want to, hey, I found out that I can do this, probably you will be able to do it with simpler machines. They are cheaper, but on the long run they will not be cheaper because you will end up by buying another one and then probably selling the other one at the worst value. But that's another topic. Now let's look at the screen right over here and let's move on to some tests. We will do two synthetic benchmarks right over here and then also the transfer speeds. Now first of all let's use iperf. Just You can see some results right over here from my previous uh, video and I'm going to press uh, enter on the command line so that we can see and we are getting probably lower results than on the past uh, test that we have done. And although iperf is uh, one of the tests used to measure uh, network bandwidth, we are using not only the network but also disks. So in my opinion probably this is not the best. But it's here and we have done quite a few on the last video where I was talking about the Kinap switch so you can check out some of those right over there. Now let's take a look right over here to the disk speed test and one of the things that I would like to start not with this one right over here but with a slower machine and let's go for a WD My Book Live uh, which we can um, start. This machine has more than 10 years, so I was saying that I'm not really sure if it's a gigabit connection, but it has to be a gigabit connection, or else I would only have 10 megabytes if it was a 100 megabit. So it's a gigabit connection, but with one single disk, and this is the speed that we can expect. Now let's go to something a little bit better, but still very limited, a WD EX2. Uh, which um, I've got it since almost the beginning that I started to use Nash, but soon I learned that they were not enough. And today, they only to store documents and redundant documents. I don't use them very intensively like I do use the other Nash units. But this one here, as you can see, has an improved uh, speed. Let's go to a more robust machine, which has been with me for four years or something like that, which is a Asus Store. Uh, 6404T and I use that to put a lot of files right over there but as you can see right over here um, in terms of speed it has a gigabit connectivity it has link aggregation but I'm not using and it's showing right over here 88 megabytes per second on writes and 110 megabytes per second on reads and this is using the full gigabit connectivity right over here so this is just Awesome. Now let's stop this test and let's go to the 10 gigabit, which is this one right over here. And let's start to see if there's any difference or not. And probably there is. It's reaching 260, 240s, but it goes a little bit uh, over that on the right. Oh, there it goes. 300 and something, 370, 300 and. 40s so this is just awesome and, and and it's great to see and on the read size we have 650 megabytes per second on reads now one of the things that i would like to share with you is that iperf gives me right over here uh, on this test 3.04 3.27 this would be uh, representing 300 and something megabytes and yeah sure for the rights yeah but where are the reads? We are reaching, and this is using the 10 gigabit connection, so we, we don't have this value right over here. Sometimes we get on iperf that value, but it's not always. So it, I'm not really sure when testing an Ash if iperf is the best test or not. So let's use this one, let's use iperf, and then you on that side of the screen be the judge of it. But to me, more important is not this one and not this one, is the transfer of files, real files, 
and what we are going to do is I'm going to open this this is the uh, one of the test folders that I created here and let's open three videos that I've got right over here and let's start with one with one gigabyte and let's push it so we are reaching 100 and 200 three, almost 300 let's put in this one which has no. okay we don't need to, to see the video let's just put it in uh, and let's see the speed that we get 200 and something and 200 and almost 300 sometimes reaching the 300 mark almost and there we go let's put in this one and of course i'm not timing anything but you can time right over there and then do, do your calculations um because we've got this three kind of files here and if you ask hey robert okay but i do work with smaller files a lot of files but very very small the results will be different but this is the kind of file that i work with and it's the, the kind of file that i'm comfortable using so let's put in all these aside and let's do something let's transfer the three files just to see the result that we will get so 400 and something 300 400 uh 400 <laughs> it's not getting the best result that i got on the last one that i did not record the screen but hopefully we will get there but let's go for it so ah see, here it is 730 this is the maximum that i've got so far uh in uh, in terms of transfer using the uh, speed uh, well the, the tool of windows to measure that so we reached 730 it's recorded so all oh, okay. so once again uh, 600 <laughs> something uh, i was getting uh, just a few moments ago uh, when i did mess up the recording of my screen i was getting roughly 700 and something megabytes which was great and i was really happy but i even mentioned i'm recording the screen so everything but i was not recording the screen so it looks like 650 660 is the maximum that i can show you right over here now i was really happy because on the last uh, video that i was recording uh, i got 730 and i was really really happy this is the last one and we are not reaching there with 600 and something but nonetheless 650 megabytes per second um tells us something that uh, right over here should say 6.5 gigabit and it doesn't so once again i'm not really sure if hyperf is the best scenario for us in this kind of test but guys you have hyperf you have speed test and you also the real uh, world transfer of files hopefully this video was helpful in some way and if it was don't forget that usual thumbs up right over there my name is Roberto george and as always i'll see you guys on the next one